Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, alleged airline drug trafficker appears in court. NFP MPs walk out after motion dismissed. And non-SDA teachers forced to look for new schools. From the studios of FBC Super, Jackie Spade. A 28-year-old man who was the second suspect in the alleged Fiji Airways drug trafficking investigations appeared in the Raki Raki Magistrates Court today. Justin Ho is charged with one count of unlawful importation and exportation and one count of unlawful possession, manufacture, cultivation and supply contrary to Section 5B of the Illicit Drugs Control Act 2004. Ho is alleged to have on the 23rd of December 2018 in Nandi without lawful authority facilitated in exporting two parcels weighing more than two kilos of cocaine and illicit drugs. Ho's lawyer Ronald Gordon applied for bail stating that his client had voluntarily surrendered to police when they were looking for him. Gordon also says that Ho has been co cooperating with police ever since he was taken in for questioning last year. However, the police prosecution objected to bail, stating the case is of public interest and that the amount of drugs is substantial. The prosecution says they are trying to consolidate Justin Ho's file with the first accused. It was also revealed in court that Ho currently has a bribery case with FICAC at the Nandi Magistrates Court. Magistrate Lisiate Fotofili denied Ho bail on the grounds that he does not have the full details of the accused's bribery case with FICAC and hence cannot give a bail ruling. Ho will reappear on Monday at the Nandi Magistrates Court. National Federation Party MPs Pio Tikundu and Lenora Ngerngeretambo walked out of Parliament today. This was after Speaker of Parliament Ratu Epeli Nailatikau dismissed a motion brought up by Tikundu and Dua. Ali Kimbia with the details. Ratu Epeli says the motion by Pio Tikundu and Dua to amend the Sugar Industry Amendment Act of 2015 cannot be done according to the laws of Parliament. For Parliament to exercise its lawmaking authority under the Constitution is through the enactment of bills. And the second is that such process is not complete without the assent of the President. Speaking at length on the motion, Ratu Epeli says a motion on its own authority cannot amend or repeal a primary legislation. Tikundu and Dua says they respected the Speaker's ruling, however, do not agree with the rationale of his decision. But this morning, the Speaker ruled that any amendments to the legislation must be brought in by way of a member's bill. However, a bill for any new legislation is only brought if Parliament agrees to amend it. This is especially so in respect of the opposition. While clarifying on the motion, Ratu Epeli also reminded the opposition members to provide accurate questions and motions in Parliament. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. But the Vono Adventist College will be closed from the end of Term 1, as the Seventh-day Adventist Church wants only Adventist staff at the school. Eleanor Trangaview reports this will now mean the current teachers will have to be placed in other schools and the students will have to look for other schools. The future now looks bleak for the 21 teachers and 178 students of Vatuvono Adventist College in Dakaunrobe as the Seventh-day Adventist Church has decided to close down the school from the 18th of April. Seventh-day Adventist Church General Secretary Pastor Joe Telemey Tonga told FBC News in an email that the church wants the freedom under its beliefs to do education its way and this includes having an all-Adventist staff at the school. FBC News understands none of the current teaching staff is Adventist, with the principal being a Catholic. Pastor Talimei Tonga says they have undertaken this principled stand to ensure the delivery of holistic Christian education through the teachers, staff and programs of the school. 
He adds the Adventist ethics and principles are not able to be done or understood clearly by anyone else than those that have a clear understanding and foundation of the church's philosophy. Pastor Talimai Tonga says it will now be the responsibility of government to place the teachers in other schools. Students will also have to look for other schools. Those who choose to attend the sister schools Nabisau Adventist High in Teilevu and Suva Adventist College in Lami will be assisted by the church. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. The $20 million loan given to the Ithau K Affairs Board by the government has been fully repaid. The interest-free loan was approved by the then government in 1989 to accelerate the participation of Fijians in businesses. However, in 2001, the SVT government tabled a bill in Parliament to convert the loan into a grant with no repayments necessary. But in 2010, the Mbainimarama government decided that the $20 million issued to the Ithau K Affairs Board should remain alone and be paid as soon as possible. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbainimarama today told Parliament that this loan has been paid in full. In July 2010, the uh, FHL Board approved the $20 million loan to the Tokyo FS Board to facilitate the remain, uh, repayment of the loan from the Tokyo FS Board to government. And this was a commercial loan at a market-based interest rate. And the Tokyo FS Board subsequently used the loan proceeds to pay off in full its loan with government. Still to come, claims of prison contraband surface in Parliament. And Fijians go on Hong Kong frenzy. Details after the break. The UNS CAP 2019 Economic and Social Survey Report for Asia Pacific was launched yesterday with a focus on people and planet beyond economic growth. The flagship report highlights that sustainable development goals by 2030 are attainable with an investment by countries estimated at 1.5 trillion US dollars, which works out to a dollar person. Maggie Boyle reports. I wonder if it's, it's a little late. Focused on people and the environment, the annual report touts a change in mindset to ensure sustainable development. It's time that economics borrow ideas from other disciplines, sociology, psychology, anthropology, that place emphasis on internal values that is, on things that make life worthwhile. And it proposes a considerable investment. Estimates uh, sort of annual additional investment um, for achieving sustainable development goals in the developing countries from the Asia Pacific region. And this additional investment is in the order of 1.5 trillion dollars. For development partners, the report bears similarities with their change in policies. New Zealand's well-being budget is, is taking this, kind of taking it one step further and this is driven by the government's belief that uh, well-being belongs very much at the heart of policy making. And there's growing support for governments to prioritize people and planet. To bring the Asia part into a new discussion on how we live with our oceans live with nature and how we live and manage our resources. Progress must embody economic, social and environmental goals, not just, uh, not just economic uh, goals. In July, a second Pacific update report is expected to further detail how PICs can better navigate their economic futures. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Serious allegations of prison officers colluding with inmates and smuggling contrabands have surfaced in Parliament. Sidelpa MP Moses Mbulitavu, a former inmate, made the claims while responding to Attorney General Aya Said Kayum's comments on contraband supplied inside correction facilities. Pranita Prakash reports. Sidelpa MP Moses Mbulitavu, who spent few months in prison last year, alleged contraband are smuggled into correction facilities through illegal cooperation. Contrabands come into prison, mobile phones, uh, those prohibited items. 
cigarettes, illegal drugs, everything. They come from passing through the, the, the system. Attorney General Ayasi Ed Kayum says recommendations have been made to introduce new technologies to counter this issue. The committee has recommended scanners, handheld scanners, uh, permanent scanners because we had a lot of contraband coming through. So of course uh, we have also seen that sometimes those who come under the guise of visiting uh, you know, remand prisoners or perhaps even other prisoners, uh, they in fact do bring in contraband. So there has been a need to try and, uh, you know, uh, mitigate these risks. And However, Bulitavu says this will not solve the issue. The doesn't lie into the technology we bring in because most of those cases, are, you know, are done through collusion where inmates and officers, they collude uh, to bring this illegal stuff into the prison facilities. Bulitavu says there is a need for correction officers to understand rules and become law-abiding officers. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Health Ministry is working with its environmental health inspectors and police to address the issue of substance abuse in our communities. This comes as opposition MP Linda Tambuya questioned the minister responsible about the mental health of children involved in glue sniffing. Kelly Vavella reports. What, um, just the opposition says they're aware of incidents of glue sniffing by children under the age of 18 in certain parts of the Central Division. And this is a very huge concern in our communities, uh, certainly for the communities in Asinu, as it's readily available. What policies can the government come up with to regulate or at least to put a ban on the access, or regulate the access of glue? Health Minister Dr. Ifremi Wangai Nambete says glue sniffing is a learned behavior. We identify uh, the particular areas, we identify the particular homes if we can, we then uh, give it to the police because first and foremost um, that is an area for uh, the, uh, the law enforcers to be able to support us in. In terms of ongoing care, uh, if they, we do identify children, we do identify uh, Fijians that need help, uh, we have the mechanisms in place in terms of, as I said earlier, the decentralized mental health programs. The minister says counselors and psychologists are providing support to the ministry in regard to this issue, especially Pacific Counseling Services. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. With the excitement building for the Hong Kong Sevens, many shopkeepers in the city have been selling Fijian flags and merchandise. FBC News was in the capital and spoke to sellers and fans who expressed their excitement. Kritika Kumar reports. Suresh Raninga, who works for CKAZ Buys, highlighted that their sales have increased in past days. Hong Kong 7 tournament coming up tonight. The sale is good. There's a lot of people looking for the T-shirt flag. He says he supports Fiji and has bought a T-shirt for himself and is looking forward to wearing it while watching the team perform. They are so passionate about the game because they enjoy that 7 rugby a lot. And they got a lot of followers for that industry. You know, irrespective of race, all come together when it comes to seventh rugby in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a paradise of rugby. Nitin Maharaj said before going home yesterday, he made sure that he bought the white and blue shirt to show his support for the Fiji team. Since Fiji is playing this uh, afternoon, so I'm a very proud Fijian supporter. I'm always there, whether Fiji wins or loses. Meanwhile, Matereti Balewai says he is looking forward to spending weekend with families and supporting Fiji. Well, I just sit down with my friends at home and enjoy the game and waiting for the team to bring home the cups. Rugby has always lifted the spirit of Fijians together in a common drive for victory in Hong Kong. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Coming up in sports tonight, Dwai hopes to make history this weekend. And South Africa chases its first Hong Kong title. This and more after the break. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Yeni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coro Coro, Singer Toka. I love listening to Gold of Them. Only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold of Them here in Missouri. Gold of Them, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold of Them plays the best classics here in Africa, Singer Toka. Gold of Them, only the classic hits.
History beckons for Fiji Airways star playmaker Jerry Tuai as the team prepares to win their fifth Hong Kong Sevens title. If Fiji defends their title at SoComPo this weekend, Tuai will become the first ever Sevens player in the world to win five years in a row at Happy Valley. Meli Tavanga reports. Jerry Tuai has come a long way since 2015 and ever since they've been the defending champions and is the only player remaining in the current squad who's won back-to-back -back in the four consecutive year. From Jerry too, I only first came in to Paolo Johnson, um, to the likes of his and things. There's always a, a makeup of a player that you, you need to dress as a coach and Nick is creating that. Um, I think that Hong Kong has always been special for, for Fijian players because of that nature of the tournament. For many, he's got a bit of pressure on him now uh, because of what people are saying. But as I tell him, that's just what people are saying. Despite coming up short in the past three World Series tournaments, head coach Gareth Baber says Hong Kong is a place where Fiji love to play. Doing it for, for our garden, for country. Um, you know, that's a big motivation factor for all the players, especially the, some of these young players whose first trips it is to Hong Kong, being away from family is, is you know, relying on our family that we have here. In a country united by Sevens Rugby, Prime Minister Warengem Bainimarama says we should continue to rally behind our heroes in hope to defend the tournament again this year. Oh, uh, we wish them well, eh? uh, like always. We would love them to win again. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fiji takes on Kenya in its opening pool match at 11.37 tonight. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. Former Fiji Airways Sevens rep Isake Katanimbao believes the Fijian players need to execute their game plan put in place if they want to defend their title in Hong Kong this weekend. Katanimbao, who led the Fiji Army side at the GF1 HK Football Club 10th tournament, says our players have what it takes to win in Hong Kong f fifth year in a row. He says playing in Hong Kong means so much to them. We have a good winning uh, uh, streak here in uh, Hong Kong and uh, we've been champions for the last uh, four years in Hong Kong and uh, it's good to be back and uh, we have a lot of history here. Uh, we like, we love Hong Kong. The Samoa Seven side hopes to finish in the top four of the World Series standing at the end of the season. Coach Gordon Tijan says it's every team's dream to play and win at the World Sevens capital in Hong Kong. Koroi Tandalala reports. Straight through, Polly, straight through. Go. Samoa wants to improve its performance and get an automatic qualification to the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. The Hong Kong Sevens, it's a tournament everyone wants to be part of. It's probably the Sevens capital of the world playing it here in Hong Kong. And for us, it's about moving up places in the World Series to get into that top four to automatically qualify for the Olympics. That's our, our goal. Coach Gordon Tijan says winning the Hong Kong title will validate that as a team to watch out for in the future. What you're doing here is so, so important that you get it right. We're not the pressure. There's no people, there's no stadium, there's no proper game. It's a training run. It's where you learn from it. The sevens rugby is a, is a sport that's driven by motivation. If you work particularly hard, particularly around conditioning, around the sacrifices you make around you know, nutrition, and uh, if you can get that trust and you build it both ways, you'll have a very, very good team. The side currently ranked seventh in the World Series standing, last one at Sokon 4 in 2010. Koroi Tandulala, FBC Sports. The South Africa seven side hopes to win its first ever Hong Kong title this weekend. Blitzbok fullback Soyuz Wapi says the players are really settling in well and are eager to deliver on the field. He says they are aware of the threats from Samoa, Scotland and Japan in their pool games and they have created a game plan to take them down. The last tournament we played in was in Canada and Vancouver and we actually went all the way to win the tournament. I think we sort of gelled very well as a team and uh, really happy with the growth that we've made as a team. Fijian born in Japan, Sevens winger Kameli Tsuchima says they will try to earn as many points as possible in the Hong Kong Sevens tournament, which kicked off today. Tsuchima says their main goal for the tournament this weekend is not to finish last in their pool. Tsuchima says despite being pooled with South Africa, Samoa and Scotland, they will be faced with many challenges. At the moment, we need every point that we can get, so every game is going to be like a final. So, same as last year when we came in for the qualifier, like every game, we have to give it everything that we got.
It was a fine day throughout the country today. Taking a look in the west, it was blistering hot sun and quite mild. Eastwards from Pack Harbour to Suva, quite hot with very light sunny spells. And up north, it was quite comfortable with cool conditions. At sea, easterly winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 11.55 p.m. with high tide at 7.11 a.m., sunrise at 6.17. For tomorrow, it's heavy showers are lined up for most parts of the country. Tomorrow's temps, most centres will be cool at 30 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, cloudy conditions coupled with rain to affect the country. Recapping the main stories for tonight, alleged airline drug trafficker appears in court and if PMPs walk out after motion dismissed, and non-SDA teachers forced to look for new school. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, this week we're asking, should people stop making hateful and racist comments on social media? Visit our FBC website to answer. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj, or you can... Tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC news. That was your FBC news for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka, Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Soname Nasori Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singh Alliance. Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot.